Um, hello, everyone. Um, good evening. Um, and thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm Pusha Reddy, and I'm a senior data engineer. And our topic is um, empowering data driven decisions using data engineering. Um, let me share my screen and then we can get started. Okay. All right. Yeah. So before we begin, um, I would like to give you a glimpse of um, uh, my journey as a data engineer. Um, okay. So after completing my BTEC in 2008, um, I started working as a software engineer in one of the IT firm in India. And since then, I have uh, worked for various industries like uh, manufacturing, financial services, healthcare, um, then um, insurance companies and currently being uh, mobility and connectivity. So over these 14 years, I have worked uh, and used various tools and technologies for building as well as designing data warehousing solutions. Um, Informatic uh, being one of the very popular uh, ETL tools Then have used various SQL and NoSQL databases. I have used and worked on various file systems and um, have good, good experience of working on Python programming. Over the last couple of years, I have been using AWS services, uh, speci specifically uh, Redshift, which is a cloud-based data warehouse. Then I've recently explored Datafix, which is um, a collaborative Apache Spark-based um, uh, um, Apache Spark-based um, Apache Spark based tool for uh, distributed data computing and it is highly useful and uh, heavily used by data engineers and data scientists. Okay, so as per the Statista Research Department, uh, they have forecasted that by 2025, the amount of data that is going to get created, copied, as well as captured could be more than 180 zettabytes. So with so much data, around us, it is even more important that we extract information out of it and use it for our decision um, making. And, uh, and other organizations who um, have started now realizing that with time, uh, that the data should lie at the heart of the decision making and all the data-driven organizations are really customer focused and they um, enjoy the insights from their customer journey and uh, um, detect what are the missed as well as new opportunities that they can use. Also, it helps them to uh, be very agile and open to change in the markets. So if we will categorize um, the data, we can say it is of three types, structured, semi-structured and unstructured. Structured being um, the data stored in a relational kind of a model where we have data in the form of rows and columns. The structure is predefined here. And when it comes to semi-structured, though we do have some structures available, but it is more flexible. For an example, JSON files, CSV files, and XMLs. Uh, and the third category is unstructured. Um, example, the video files, audios, then images, uh, social media, a post, right? So with so much data around us, and these can be stored in you know various different systems like Oracle, like SQL as well as NoSQL databases. Then in the file systems, they can also be um, available in the CRM platforms like Salesforce. Then data is available in marketing and um, advertising platforms like Google Ads, Facebook Ads, LinkedIn, to name a few. But these data in these systems are very transactional and hence not very suitable for analytics. So that is where uh, the data engineers come in picture. So our job is to do this data integration processing, which means we extract the data, then we do the transformation, meaning cleansing of the data, then doing massaging of the data, doing the filtering, formatting of the data, standardizing it, handling missing data, then deduping of the data. So um, after doing all the massages to the data, we finally load it into a centralized location, which is called data warehouse. Now, uh, depending on where the transformation steps take place, that is before or after loading, 
It is called either ETL process or ELT process. Well, both are widely used and it totally depends on your business requirements and the situations which one to um, opt for. And now, once the data is available in Data Warehouse, we can then um, analyze it and um, can be used by our BI analysts and data scientists for analysis. Um, so let's look at the definition of data engineering. So this is a field for designing, building, um, and building the systems for collecting, storing, transforming, validating, and preparing the data at scale. It enables uh, data analysts as well as data scientists to glean knowledge and insights and thereby promoting business decisions by the organizations. So here I have a, a small example of the data warehouse and um, how we store the data. Um, so all the above three are the dimension tables. What is happening is they are the ones which are the con contextual attributes like location, brands, customer, time. And then there's something called fact tables where it stores the keys of all these dimension tables as well as the quantifiable measures. So if we will read the first row, it means, let's say location two, um, we can say that in Manchester for brand Dell, the amount of units sold was 20 and the revenue generated was uh, 12,000 pounds in January, 2022. So this is how we store the data in the warehouse and um, just with this information itself, there's so many business questions we can address, like what are the buying patterns? What is the customer behavior? What is the budgeting and the forecasting? What was the year-on-year -year performance of the various brands? And the, and the questions that we can address is just limitless. Um, and that is why it is being widely used by across all organizations because it is not limited to any industry, but can be um, used by um, almost every industries that we can think of. So let's have a look at the roles of a data engineer and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we are responsible for data infrastructure management, um, which also includes uh, code repository management, versioning of the code. Um, then we are involved in data modeling, that is designing and identifying the objects and uh, identifying the relationship among the objects. Then our responsibility includes um, ETL pipeline design as well as building the pipelines and also providing the production support once it is into the production system. Um, um, as a data engineer, we are responsible for data warehouse management, where we um, ensure that this, uh, this data warehouse itself is available and the state is healthy. Then um, we ensure that while designing, uh, as well as while during building the data warehouse, we follow the best practices that are issued by the various platforms in which we are creating the data warehouse. Then we are also responsible for job scheduling and monitoring, which brings the data from the source to the target. And we are responsible for ensuring that the data is available um, on a timely manner for reporting as well as for the data science work. Then we constantly look for performance tuning and um, any repetitive tasks that we see where or uh, the tasks where we are spending a lot of time, we try to automate it. We are responsible for user administration of the data warehouse, meaning who we should who should be accessing the data warehouse. And um, so we create the users, give them access, and then we manage their groups as well as privileges. And we also act as a data consultant. Um, which means we uh, do the impact analysis, we do, we are responsible for understanding what we have in our warehouse and then uh, addressing the user queries, then troubleshooting of um, any issues that we run into, um, identifying data issues or code issues um, is all um, that we take care of, as well as um, we write complex queries which can then be helpful for RBI analysts for reporting. All right, so um, with all these roles that we play on a day-to-day -day basis, let's see what are the skills that are needed to be a data engineer. Um, I would say the first and foremost uh, skills should be, one should be good at uh, SQL. 
And now with um, so much emphasis given on semi-structured data, we are processing semi-structured data in many of the organizations. Having good understanding of NoSQL databases also comes handy. Um, then having at least experience of one programming language would be essential to be a good data engineer. Then um, um, a working knowledge and experience of data warehousing solutions as well as ETL and ELD concepts is imperative to be a data engineer. Then understanding how batch and streaming data works. So batch load means where you are, um, where the data is processed on a set time, whereas streaming means the data is continuously flowing and this is specifically used for real-time analytics. Um, now next, the, with the adoption of cloud, uh, cloud-based data warehousing, it is it is essential that we understand what is cloud computing, uh, what are the various services, what are the various platforms available in the market, and how these services can come together to serve um, the purpose of detention meaning. Then there are many organizations we are, which are dealing with big data. Big data means high in volume or high in the, the data itself is of, variety, of huge varieties. Um, and the other option is where the speed at which the data is being generated is very high. So all these three types are called big data. So all the organizations who are dealing with big data, for them, um, a big data engineer is very um, uh, important. And as a big data engineer, one should know how the distributed data processing and distributed data storage works, because that is how you handle big data. All right, um, what next? Okay, uh, cloud-based data warehousing. So yeah, let's have a little deep insight about the cloud-based data warehousing. So as I mentioned earlier with um, rapid rate of growth um, in the adoption of cloud, uh, we should know why it is happening and why it is so um, high in demand compared to the on-premises warehouse. Um, I've highlighted four important um, aspects. The first one being it is not limited by constraints of the physical data centers. What does that mean is as an organization, um, we can grow or shrink the data warehouse depending on your business needs. Then they offer fully managed services. It means as a data engineer, we don't have to worry about the hardware patching, oh, sorry, hardware provisioning, the software patching, then the setup, and um, majority of the configurations are being taken care of by the platforms, then uh, the pro providers, then um, um, for the recovery as well as for the backup, um, all these services are being taken care of by the uh, uh, providers itself. Then with uh, most of the organizations dealing with big data, the next uh, feature that is massively parallel processing, MPP architecture, which are provided by these cloud-based uh, warehousing um, is uh, very much in demand. What does that mean is whenever we are processing a high value of data, depending on the size, it can involve um, many uh, servers, and distribute their work. And that is how it provides high performance queries on large data volumes. And you don't have to spin off all of them uh, every time. It only totally depends on you know, how much volume of data that you need to process. And last not, but not the least, uh, columnar data stores. Back in the days when we were relying on on-premise data warehouses, um, all the data was stored in the raw format, um, in the <laughs> raw format, but now, um, they have changed the way the data should be stored in the database where the data is stored in columnar manner. What does that mean is um, every single attributes, let's say the name or the numbers, they are in the same block within the database. And hence, um, when we are fetching the data, when we are doing queries, it is becoming more flexible and is very economical for analytics. Um, so now let's see what are the various popular cloud-based uh, data warehouse platforms. The number one being AWS Redshift, and then we have Google BigQuery, Microsoft Azure, Synapse Analytics, and Snowflake. They all are very popular in the market at present. All right. Um, so this is a, a, a architecture diagram that I have come up 
with for AWS, but then we have similar uh, setup that can be done for all other platforms. And this is not an extensive list. And just to give you an idea to know what are the various AWS services that can come together for data engineering. Um, so let's have a look. Okay, so right from this data sources. Um, along with various heterogeneous sources that we saw earlier uh, for file systems and for uh, SQL and NoSQL, they are data sources which are available for, from AWS itself. The first one being RDS. It is a relational database services, which is uh, SQL based. Then we have DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL based uh, service offered by AWS. So um, we can extract the data in two forms, uh, let's say a batch processing and streaming data processing. For that, the services that, can, that we can use are um, Lambda and AWS Group for batch. And for streaming, Kinesis um, is high, very popular. So after extracting the data, we can load the data in S3 buckets. It is like a folder structure where we dump the data in the raw format. And um, after performing some transformation, we can load it into another bucket called um, process bucket, let's say. So these transformations can be carried out by AWS services like AWS Glue, Lambda, and EMR. Then from here, we can load the data um, into Redshift, which is the data cloud-based data warehouse provided by AWS, which is, and that is where we can do a lot of derivations, aggregations, and make it ready for reporting. So for reporting, there's another service called QuickSight offered by AWS, which is very popular. And for machine learning, we can use SageMaker. And this is this last bit that I would really like to highlight here is um, a feature called Crawler. So AWS Crawler, what it does is it scans through your objects and extract data about data called metadata and stores it into AWS uh, Glue catalog, which then can be used by a service called Athena, which uses these uh, metadata to directly write queries on S3 buckets. Um, again, as I said, this is not a extensive bit, but should give you a good idea about you know, how the various services comes together. Um, so now let's see what is the future of data engineering uh, looks like. Um, so as per LinkedIn 2020, it, this field was among the top 15 emerging jobs in the US itself. Then there's a high demand of cloud data engineers and big data engineers. And um, now there has been a big shift of focus from batch processing to stream streaming data processing for real-time analytics. And this is where a lot of emphasis is given on specialization within the data team. So when I joined in 2008 in IT firm, we were just called as software engineers and we were responsible for um, handling the data warehouse. We were also responsible for uh, generating reports, but now there's more focus on the specific piece of work that we do within the data team. And so to summarize, I should say that um, the future of data engineering looks very exciting as well as challenging at the same time. Okay, so yeah, that's all from my end. Thank you so much for listening. I uh, hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any queries. Thank you.